Hello, today I'm going to take a look at the Derwent Ink Tens Paint Pan Studio Set, which I showed briefly in a recent art haul. I was able to get this set for about £25 on Amazon Prime Day. I've already got the Derwent Line and Wash Set, and this includes a few of the Ink Tens paints so the Sun Yellow, Poppy Red, Bright Blue, Payne's Grey, and Natural Brown and I quite liked using them, so I decided to get the whole set. The complete range of the Inktons paint pans is 24, and the 24 are available as two separate paint pans about this size. So this is the casing. It's a bit slimmer, but obviously longer than the other Derwent sets. And it's got the vellum colour chart like the other sets as well. So mixing area, removable sponge area and a small water brush. Now one thing I learnt fairly early on when I opened this set in my last art tour is that the colour, the colours are loose because I dropped this afterwards and these have all got mixed up so I actually need to do a little swatch just to check I've got them the right colours in the right places so I'll just go away and check that those are correct first so just quickly then what we're told about these paints is that this set has a unique ink tense formulation and unlike traditional watercolours, washes of vivid paint can be applied without dissolving previously dried layers. I've done another video which includes a comparison between the inks, the pencils and the blocks from ink tense, so I'll link to that down below if you're interested in that. So I've drawn out a chart for them and I've got them in the right order now. They're all slightly pre-wet now, just because I've tried them out. We aren't given pigment information for them, and I think they're quite consistent in texture, so I'm just going to swatch through them without me talking about each colour. So here are the paints when they're dry. They are pigment based but they behave more like dye. They're very bright and they don't flow a great deal.
The paints have been drying now for a couple of hours, so I'm just going to have a little test of their permanence in the heavier lay down areas and in the light wash areas. I won't do all of them, I think they're fairly consistent. I also found that when I painted with them they were quite consistent in their texture and how well they re wet. So the bright blue and the navy blue did have a little bit of almost kind of granulation there. I'll just try it now in the in the paler wash areas. So I'm not scrubbing super hard at these, but you can see that even in the more dilute areas where I would have thought that all the paint had been activated, there's still a fair bit of pigment coming off. So it's just something to be aware of, that when it says that they're permanent and that the underlayers won't be disturbed, you might get some pigment still being removed when you paint over them. I use this photo that I took down on the lizard in Cornwall for my reference photo. And I'm using the ink turns paints, first of all, to create a background painting. This is done in a Talons Art Creation sketchbook. And I use a Princeton Neptune half inch square wash brush for all the painting. So after my background wash layer, I then go in with Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s. It's nice being able to put water on the Neo Color 2s without worrying too much about the underpainting.
I used Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White for the white details. Then I go in and add some areas of greater contrast with my new Faber Castell Gelatos. So I'd say that the Inktense paints aren't a replacement for watercolours, but they're a good smooth reliable medium for creating an underpainting that you can have a lot of fun of over the top with other wet media. I'd be interested to know as well how you use Inktense paints. Thanks ever so much for watching, I hope that was enjoyable. Bye!